Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, President signs FAA reauthorization bill, the B-29 dock makes its first flight, the DB Cooper cold case is now on ice. I'm Brie Cross, it's July 18th, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The President has signed the FAA reauthorization bill, which includes legislation that will change third-class medical requirements for many thousands of pilots. The bill is less than long-term and did not address certain key issues that the aviation industry was looking for, but it is generally considered to be a step in the right direction. EAA's Jack Pelton said in part, quote, It's important to celebrate this moment, which has been a long time coming and resulted from an incredible amount of work over the past five years. This win is for everyone who loves recreational flight. AOPA's Mark Baker said in part, quote, We did it together. Medical reforms are now the law, and that's a big win for general aviation. This is something our entire community can get excited about. However, the medical provisions of the law still has to be formatted into FAA regulations, and the legislation gives the FAA one year to accomplish this. Now, it will be very important for all interested parties to watch the regulatory process to assure that the regulations make the medical reform practical. This will be a classic case of the devil is in the details. On Sunday morning, the part of our Arrowverse, commonly referred to as Warbirds, became larger and, if weight counts, a lot heavier. The B-29, known as Doc, took to the skies for the first time since 1956. Doc now joins with the commemorative Air Force B-29 Fifi as a living and flying memorial to our heroes from World War II. The airplane, which was first located in the Mojave Desert in 1987, has been in the process of restoration in Wichita for 16 years under an organization known as Doc's Friends. Now all the hard work is paid off. The takeoff occurred at 8.59 a.m. Central Daylight Time on Sunday morning with a smooth liftoff from its temporary home at McConnell Air Force Base in Wichita, Kansas. The aircraft stayed within visual distance of the airfield and the landing gear was not retracted. The return to the airbase and a safe landing took place only about seven minutes after takeoff. The aircraft carried a crew of seven, which included the test pilot Charlie Tillman and co-pilot David Oliver. The other crew members served in the positions of flight engineer and scanners. At a press briefing following the flight, a Doc Friend spokesman gave thanks to the commemorative Air Force for all the help they had provided to make this first flight possible. After the break, the case is closed on D.B. Cooper. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. Airliner hijackings have been around for a long time, and it has not always been because of a terrorist act. The hijacking of a Northwest Orient Airlines Boeing 727 45 years ago was simply a case of ransom and robbery. On November 24, 1971, a man who was thought to be named Dan B. Cooper hijacked the flight which he boarded in Portland, Oregon. He demanded $200,000 and four parachutes, and after getting the money, he jumped from aft stair exit of the airplane while in flight and was never seen or heard from again. While Cooper vanished, some of the money he was given was found in the wilderness and identified through serial numbers on the bills. Now, according to the Associated Press, the FBI says it has exhaustively reviewed all credible leads over the past 45 years and will be redirecting the resources it has been using on Cooper to other priorities. This hijacking resulted in the installation of a switch system that prevented the 727 aft stairs from being lowered in flight. Many airlines refer to the system as the DB Cooper switch. Each week, we share with you an online video that one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Aero Video of the Week. Final lift off and left. Whenever you see a fancy paint job or trim on an airplane, keep in mind that it might not be paint. This time-lapse video shows the application of a vinyl trim on a home-built Sonics. It's fun to watch. Search Sonics Vinyl Application on YouTube. 
After these messages, Boeing receives an order for 20 Boeing 747-8 aircraft. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Boeing and Volga Deppner Group have announced the finalization of terms for the acquisition of 2747-8 freighters. This order includes four aircraft that have already been delivered. The Volga Deppner Group was the first to order the Boeing 747-8 freighter in Russia. Airbus has demonstrated aircraft visual inspection using a drone at the Farnborough Air Show. The drone, equipped with a high-definition camera, performed a visual inspection for the upper part of the aircraft. It was flown automatically while supervised by a human pilot. Embraer and Boeing have signed a teaming agreement to jointly market and support the KC-390, which is a multi-mission mobility and aerial refueling aircraft. Embraer will provide the aircraft while Boeing will be responsible for in-service support. A rebranding launch of the new Commercial Spaceflight Federation is designed to make the concept of commercial spaceflight more accessible to the general public. The company said, quote, We want to create an identity that would set a standard for the commercial space exploration industry. Bombardier Commercial Aircraft and Porter Airlines of Toronto announced that they have signed a firm purchase agreement for three Bombardier Q400 turboprop airliners. Based on the list price of the Q400 aircraft, the firm order is valued at approximately $93 million. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The FAA has announced temporary flight restrictions over both Cleveland and Philadelphia that will be in place during the Republican and Democrat nominating conventions. The GOP convention that started today brought with it a TFR that will continue through 3 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time on Friday, July 22nd. There are three separate rings for the TFR and all pilots are urged to reference the TFR graphic for precise information. Over the course of the week, the airspace restrictions will change and the list is lengthy. Pilots are strongly advised to check notices to airmen for their route of flight before flying in or near Cleveland this weekend. The Democratic Convention begins July 25th in Philadelphia, and the TFR for that event will go into effect at 10 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time on the 25th and expire on July 29th at 1 a.m. Once again, pilots need to pay attention to the graphics. As the campaign season shifts into high gear, TFRs will become more common. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. See you tomorrow.